Hello guys, S2W here as your average consumer with your casual consumers review. Today, March 26 is Nike Air Max Day. For this year 2017, Nike is celebrating its 30th anniversary since the creation of its first Air Max model. Iconic as it's the first shoe to showcase Nike's air technology to the visible eye since the Air Max 1s. This was designed by Tinker Hatfield, who is inspired by the exposed structural elements of the Georges Pompidou Center in Paris. Now 30 years into the present day, Nike has reinvented this aerosol technology on their newest model that launched today. These are the Nike Air Vapor Max Flyknit in the pure platinum colorway that I have here for a review. Before we dive deeper into the video, it's very important to keep in mind that Nike designed this shoe with the intention of using it as a performance running shoe, with many years of research done with different runners to perfect this shoe for a public wide launch. Besides a new silhouette, this new model introduced a new reinvented cushioning system, pushing Nike's visible air cushioning technology into its newest and purest form. Now let's take a closer look at this newest model of the 30th Air Max Legacy. The shoe dons the colorway pure platinum and lives to its name. In photos, the shoe looked pretty much grey or silver in color, but in hand, with the right lighting conditions, it actually shows the proper color of platinum, which emanates a shade of silverish blue as well. This is further enhanced by the bluish tint of the air sole unit on this shoe, further making the shoe more icy, blue, and clean just like the thought of platinum. The lateral side and medial side look parallel to each other in terms of visuals, with both sides displaying a crisp white Nike swoosh to kick off its flashy branding. The upper is completely made out of fly knit, which is Nike's precise knit construction made up of polyester yarn famous for its lightweight, form fitting, and seamless properties, like a one piece upper. By touch, Flyknit varies in its elastic properties depending on the part of the shoe. At the toe box, the Flyknit there is more forgiving and flexible, offering our forefoot the form-fitting elasticity and breathable room that we'll need while running in them. While in the midfoot area, it'll feel tighter there, which gives extra support and stability for our feet. This firmness is further improved by the white flyer wire filaments in between the Flyknit material, stretching the upper out and giving strength to the midfoot upper. At the back, there is a stretchable ankle collar that further pushes a sock-like fit for the sneaker. Also, if we look closely, they added a see-through overlay that acts as the mudguard around the shoe, most likely to prevent our feet from slipping out of the midsole while running, and add structure for a stable ride. The tongue is also attached to the upper of this shoe, and it's quite thin and stretchy actually. Reminds me of the same tongue on the Flyknit Racers. At the top of this tongue, there's also a Nike Vapor Max patch adhered on for further branding. This tongue is also located right under the flat platinum color laces that came with this pair of shoes. The hugest re-improvement to this design though is the air sole of this new Air Max sneaker. This translucent sole is basically filled with pressurized air inside this tough but flexible airbag, created to reduce the compressing impact against the ground. But for this model, not only did Nike constructed the largest airbag unit in history for their Air Max line, but this sole also acted as a midsole and standalone outsole for this model. They completely removed the standard secondary rubber layer that provided protection and durability to the previous air units. Now with present day technology, it allowed Nike to reinvent and improve their past air technology by creating new independent air sole units that are just as durable yet elastic on its own while also making the shoe extra lightweight due to the removal of the excess rubber foam outsole as designed on previous models. If we flip over the shoe, we will see multiple airbag units separated on its own, carefully designed to keep the shoe incredibly flexible and versatile at the right places, and thus making the shoe more lightweight and comfortable when we're flexing our feet. On each airbag, there are additional rubber pods and waffles that give durability and traction for the air sole units. Certain pods also have a matte finish on the edges, what I assume gives additional grippy properties to the shoe. Near the heel section, we will also see the Air Max branding on the right shoe, while the Nike swoosh on the left. Here, you can see me pressing into the airbag, and it quickly pops back out to its original form. So you can already imagine how great this absorption works in clear view. At the back of the shoes, we have an additional white overlay with the word Vapor Max to showcase the name of this model. Inside the sneaker, there really isn't much padding around. There is a white suede-like internal heel guard that will keep our heels intact and prevent heel slippage. But other than that, the internal and external upper of this shoe is much like Nike's Flyknit Racers, with the exception of a softer Flyknit and the additional support from the mudguard overlay that I've mentioned. There is also a removable insole that comes with the sneaker. 
It's a platinum colored insole with the VaporMax and Swoosh branding at the heel portion. While flipping it over, we will see a silverish tint on the underside, with a shriek of blue foam cushioning on the edges of the 4 foot portion of the insole. Anyways, here are some Nike Air VaporMax Flyknit Pure Platinum Fit footage. Fit wise, when I bought these, I was able to try them in my true to size and half size up at Foot Locker. For this shoe, sizing was questionable for me because at the midfoot section, it does feel snug. And as a person with wide feet, that's always a concerning problem. However, I ended up picking my true to size because ultimately, when I tried on the half size up, the length was way too long. And I usually prefer toe room as well, but at half a size up, this shoe was just too long. But width wise, it's still tolerable and not as bad as the Flyknit Racers at true to size for me as I do find these VaporMax a little wider than the Racers. Comfort wise, the shoe itself is very lightweight and the upper is very form fitting, much like wearing a second skin or sock like fit like the Racers. Air unit wise, if you compare it to old air unit soles, these are some of the most cushionized air soles that you could feel and see, especially the large and flexible airbag at the heel portion. The midfoot and forefoot area of the sole unit is more stiff when you compare to the heel, and as the shoe itself, the overall cushion is more reactive and firm I would say. If you want me to compare it to something like the Adidas Boost technology, I will say each offers a different type of compression. Boost feels more mushy to me while these VaporMax are more springy. Boost, specifically the Ultra Boost, is more evenly spread out in terms of its cushioning as well, as these VaporMax Air Sole instead are broken into individual units rather than a fully connected sole. So for me, I will feel the rigidity of where the sole unit separates, which minimizes the overall bouncy properties as experienced on the Ultra Boost cushioning. This design, however, look really amazing. The concept looks very futuristic and feels like Nike is in a great position at looking ahead and searching for the next innovative shoe both aesthetic and comfort wise. I am very interested to see what they can come up next. Price wise, these were retail for $255 Canadian before tax. Not the greatest in terms of pricing, but in my opinion, an absolutely stunning work of design with excellent cushioning. But would I wear these specifically for running though? That's questionable, as the cushion does feel too springy and the lack of a more structural fit does feel like I can twist my ankle pretty easily with the uneven air sole units as well. As always, throw me some likes if you liked the video and let me know in the comments if you ended up grabbing one of the first 3 colorways of these Nike Vapor Maxes. These are unique and beautiful shoes that I have to say Nike did a fine job re-innovating their Air Max line and resetting the model in preparation for today's fashion and possible future trends. That's it for today, S2W signing off.